Hey guys, so here I have the Samsung S23 Ultra and the iPhone 14 Pro Max and these are both flagship models from Samsung and Apple. I have the base model from both companies and they're very similarly priced but the default S23 Ultra base model has 256 gigs of storage compared to the 128 gigs from the iPhone. Starting off with the design, the iPhone 14 Pro Max still has this triangular camera design which they have kept since the iPhone 11 Pro Max but the only difference is the camera bump getting increasingly bigger each generation you go up. We have a stainless steel border and the Corning Gorilla Glass on the front and back. Around the phone we have the power and volume buttons, microphones, speakers, SIM card slot and of course the infamous lightning cable port. The S23 Ultra also has a similar design to the previous S22 Ultra but Samsung have squared off the edges a bit more so that it makes it a lot easier and nicer to hold. The camera layout is in a more vertical format compared to the iPhone, but I think that both designs look really good in their own ways. They're very unique and you just instantly know what phone it is just by looking at the back. The S23 Ultra has an aluminium frame and Gorilla Glass Victus 2 on the front and the back of the phone. And we have our volume and power buttons, nothing on the left side of the phone, our microphone, speakers, SIM card slot, USB-C port and we have the S Pen which I think is a really convenient feature to have on an already premium phone. Let's look at the displays. Both phones have an adaptive refresh rate of up to 120Hz and also have their own iteration of the always on display feature. I think that the always on displays for both the S23 and 14 Pro Max look really clean. Some people have said that the iPhone's always on display just look like a dim version of their regular home screen, but since then, Apple have released an update where you can have a blank always on display similar to Samsung's. The iPhone 14 Pro Max has a 6.7 inch display with a resolution of 2796 by 1290 which is about 460 pixels per inch. The S23 Ultra has a 6.8 inch display with a resolution of 3088 by 1440 or about 500 pixels per inch which is a bit larger in size and resolution than the iPhone. But the iPhone does have a brighter display with a peak brightness of 2000 nits compared to the 1750 nits of the S23 Ultra. So if you use your device a lot in the sunlight, then you are going to appreciate the brighter display. And of course, on the top of each display we have the Infinity O on the S23 Ultra and the new Dynamic Island on the 14 Pro Max. I personally think that Apple's idea of the dynamic island is truly amazing and that the design on the previous phones already has this blank indent at the top. So to create something interactive out of it is such a great idea. But I don't really see all the hype about it and realistically just how much more this adds in terms of functionality to the overall iPhone experience. Yes, I do think it's cool to see the clean animations, what music you're playing, your calls, timers and navigation. However, I would use my phone more to watch videos and the dynamic island just stands out a lot more compared to the Samsung's small camera cutout. One of the main reasons for the dynamic island are the sensors for Face ID and I do think that Apple's face recognition technology is one of the most reliable and fast way of protecting your phone. The S23 Ultra has an ultrasonic in-display fingerprint scanner and also has face recognition but it's nowhere as good as Apple's. I think it is down to personal preference on which method you prefer to unlock your phone, but for me, I do prefer using the fingerprint scanner because if I'm in bed and need to unlock my phone with my face already half in the pillow, then obviously this is more convenient. But with that being said, Face ID on the iPhone will work even in the dark, regardless as they use infrared, and even if you're wearing a face mask, which is pretty crazy to me. Apple is known for their fast performance. And powering the iPhone 14 Pro Max is the A16 Bionic chip with 6GB of RAM. And for the S23 Ultra we have the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip with 8GB to 12GB of RAM depending on what storage size you get. If we take a look at the Geekbench scores then the iPhone does edge the Samsung slightly but if you're looking for an extra bit of performance quality then here is your answer. The iPhone does have less RAM so maybe this will come into effect in the long term. But overall using both phones, opening apps, opening the camera app, let's see if we can do this at the same time. The iPhone is faster. I don't really play any mobile games, but I would like to think that these phones could handle pretty much anything thrown at them. Now when it comes to these larger phones, battery life is a big deal. 
Battery life on both phones are very similar, with the S23 Ultra having a 5000mAh battery and the iPhone 14 Pro Max with a 4323mAh battery. Both phones average from about 11 to 11 and a half hours of screen on time, and that obviously depends on your personal usage in your day to day life. The iPhone does charge a bit slower, with about 50% in 30 minutes, compared to 65% in 30 minutes for the S23 Ultra. But what is amazing about the S23 Ultra is that it has this feature called reverse wireless charging, where it essentially acts like a portable wireless charger. You just have to turn the mode on and place your phones back to back assuming that your smartphone is capable with wireless charging. So now let's talk about the cameras. Both phones have their respective main cameras, ultra wide and telephoto cameras, and they really bring out great quality photos. There is not really much in between them in terms of quality. Low light, I think Samsung takes a slight edge here as the post-processing noise reduction seems to be a bit better and captures colours more accurately. But the S23 Ultra does have two telephoto lenses, 3x and 10x, whereas the iPhone only has the 3x. I think that both 3x photos are pretty good, and the 10x photos from the S23 Ultra are a lot more noticeably sharper and more detailed. What stands out here is the 200 megapixel main camera from Samsung, because this allows you to take photos and crop them without losing any detail. It does mean that you will take photos in bigger file sizes, but that is most likely why the minimum storage you can buy of the S23 Ultra is 256GB compared to the 128GB of the iPhone. Now, in terms of video quality, Apple has always been the king of video on smartphones, and I definitely stand by this statement. The video quality is just more consistent with the stabilization. And even though I didn't film any suitable footage, I will say one thing about cinematic mode on the iPhone and that is I'm very impressed by what you can create with just a phone using that mode. Even though you can record in 8K 30fps on the S23 Ultra, I don't think this outweighs just how crisp and clean the videos are on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So for photos I will take the S23 Ultra, but for the videos I would lean towards the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Software for both phones I think comes down to personal preference and usage. For the S23 Ultra, we have Android 13, One UI 5.1, and for the iPhone 14 Pro Max, we have iOS 16.5, with iOS 17 just around the corner. You will get around 4 years of OS updates on Android, but for the iPhone, you will get up to 5 to 7 years. What I think is a deal breaker though, for a lot of people, is the integration with other devices. If you are already in the Apple or Samsung ecosystem, then I think it makes sense to go for a phone which fits that. Both will provide a cohesive and seamless experience across all of your devices. To wrap up, I think you guys already know that I've always been a Samsung user and I will agree previously that the older generation of Samsung phones had a lot of problems and drawbacks with features such as their camera and shocking battery life. And iPhone just seems to have everything sorted out that Samsung did not. But now I would say that these two phones are pretty much on par with each other. Both are exceptional devices that cater to different user preferences. I hope that this comparison has provided you with valuable insights into the similarities and differences between these two flagship phones. Remember to also do further research and read reviews before choosing. Thanks for watching, make sure to subscribe and peace.